Hi everyone, it's Marie again with Lighten Up Buttercup coming at you with my week 28. My heavy weight was 259, my surgery weight was 243, and my current weight is 179 for a total of 80 pounds lost. Pretty happy about that, guys. Oh, my blood pressure this morning was 117 over 75. My blood sugar was 113. Let's see. Um, I wanted to talk about, there was, if you remember, I had a three-week stall where I was 185. And then all of a sudden, it seemed like overnight, it, it went from 185 and jumped down to 181. But immediately, it did that jump, seemed like overnight, and I went immediately from a three-week stall straight into another two-week stall at 181. So five solid weeks of being in a stall, guys. That was crazy. So I started looking into um, some other things to try to get my weight loss to moving again. Oh, and like, I get ahead of myself. I had bariatric surgery. On June 23rd 2020 just a few days after I turned 53 and I'm five foot four and a half inches tall so anyway and I currently weigh 179 but anyway okay so I started looking into some things because I know sometimes as we get closer to our goal weight and our BMI comes down my BMI went from a 43 point whatever to a 31 so it's come down quite a bit and I know as your BMI comes down and you get closer to goal weight that a lot of times that weight loss is really going to slow down and, and uh, it's going to get a little harder to get the weight off, you know, whereas at the start of it, it just kind of fell off on its own, it seemed like. Um, but anyway, so I've started looking into some other things after four weeks of stalling like that. And um, I started looking into some MCT oil. I started looking into some intermittent fasting, and I started looking into some Christian yoga. So anyway, um, and I'm just telling you guys what I did. I'm not giving you advice on what you need to do. You need to talk to your doctor or your nutritionist or whoever and make sure that it's right for you before you try anything. I'm just showing, showing you and telling you what I did on or I'm doing on my journey to try to help me uh, get my weight to moving again in the right direction because I still have um, I still have about 45 pounds I want to lose guys so I've still got a ways to go so I know if it's already doing this now I've, I've got my work cut out ahead of me so I've got to learn um, learn some new strategy and some new ways of helping keep this weight moving in the right direction and I want this to be a lifestyle change. I don't want to just drop the weight and go back to living the way I did before. Because if I do that, the weight's going to just it's gonna come right back on me, you know. Um, so I want to do things right. So, But anyway, so you need to look up all the benefits on MCT oil. Um, it burns fat. It helps suppress your appetite. It is wonderful for um, inflammation in your body to help with that and clear your brain fog. Feels like it gives you energy. Um, and I can tell it does help to suppress the appetite. And I've never been one to be able to fast for anything at all. And so what I've been doing is I've been fixing me a decaf coffee in the evenings after my dinner, you know, sit here with something warm to drink or flavored coffee and I'll just put my MCT oil in it and um, I'll have that before I go to bed and that way it jump starts that fat burning through the night while you're sleeping and then um, as I'm doing that this is what I've been doing this last week and when I dropped two more pounds um, I've been doing like a 12 to a 16 hour inter intermittent fasting so if I do a 12-12, that's 12 hours of fasting and 12 hours of my window of eating. And I'm still getting in plenty of fluids. I get over 90 ounces a day. And I'm still getting in my protein during my window of eating. Um, I'm still doing everything I need to be doing per my dietitian. Um, 
so you have to be very careful with that but um and then i'll get up the next morning and i'll fix my bulletproof coffee which is um it's your coffee you put in like a put in some butter i usually put a teaspoon i think you put in up to a tablespoon it sounds horrible but it really does taste pretty good um and I'll put my two squirts of MCT oil, and I'll put two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. I've tried the half and half. It doesn't taste good. It doesn't do anything for my coffee. Um, anyway, these are things that I put in it that will not break my fast. And that, that fat in the butter and the fat in the MCT oil, all natural fat, that helps carry you through. So... Say I quit eating tonight at 6.30, so by 6.30 in the morning, I've got a 12-hour fast going. And if I can make it till 10.30, that's 16 hours fast. Then I'll have my 8-hour window to eat and get all my calories and my protein and my water and my fluids in and all that. And so, um, that's what I've been doing this week, and I dropped two more pounds. And we'll see how long I stay at 179. I'm kind of... <laughs> A little bit scared but I and I've been looking into some yoga because um, it's been so dark and dreary and there's um, so cold and rainy that you can't get outside and I love the warm weather and getting out in the sunshine and uh, so my doctor had mentioned doing yoga or um, planks or um, Zumba. Well, I tried the Zumba first because I love Zumba. It's basically dancing. It's fun. You know, it's fun exercise and you burn a lot of calories doing Zumba. So if you can do Zumba, that's a good one. And the first time I tried it since I've had my neck problem with those two bulging discs in my neck, it put me down for about two weeks. Massive migraines, couldn't hardly move. It just, it just misery. So I said, uh, that's not going to work. And uh, planks, that's hard. I don't, he's wanting you to build your core strength because he says that a year out, about a year out, a lot of people that have been through weight loss surgery, they get weak in their core and they start get, losing their balance, you know, and you not you need to kind of center all that again. And so I thought, well, I looked into yoga and I found some Christian yoga because my, my faith is very strong. So, um, the stretching and the exercise in itself, nothing wrong with it, but I wanted it to be Christian based. And so that's what I found. And let me tell you, um, even the beginner senior version of it, whew, at my age, 53 years old, it's hard guys. That is a lot harder than you think. You think, oh, they're just bending in different poses and things. Try it. <laughs> I'm telling you that is hard guys. You can feel it all throughout your core, your your thighs, you know, everywhere in your back. So I've been doing that a little bit this week. But my treadmill came in Friday. Ron set it up Saturday. And today's the first day I got on it and I walked an hour solid. I didn't amp it up and do a real rigorous uh, workout. I just did uh, an hour of slow, steady walking, which... By the way, as of today, with the hour on the treadmill and all the walking I've done, I've got 10,757 steps in so far. So I am feeling it tonight, guys. That's Brandy with her little squeaky toy. If she comes over here, I'll, sh I'll show you Brandy. She's our little doxy baby. She's 10 months old. And this is Gidget right here beside me. She's our our family grouch. This is our little bitty one, Gidget. She weighs about eight to nine pounds. And she we call her the family grouch. But anyway, um, let's see. So I've been doing MCT oil, some intermittent fasting this week. I just started it. I want to learn how to. Let me turn that camera where you can see me a little better. Sorry. Um, I want to learn how to, I, I'm trying to make lifestyle changes that I can, that I can adjust to, that I can uh, continue on. I want to be healthy. I want to feel my best, you know. It's not about how I look, it's how I feel. It's my health. And um, so the things I'm doing now are trying to get my body used to how I eat, how I move, how I function. Um. So that, 
so that I can maintain this. Um, I got to make these habits now while my tool is working. So um, anyway, because I, I don't, I didn't go through all this and uh, just to go back to the way I was before, how I ate and being uh, sitting around because I didn't feel good and eating whatever I wanted. Because if I do, if I go back to the way I was before, I will physically go back to the way I was before. The weight will come right back on. Come here, Brandy. This is the one that's always making noise in my videos. This is Brandy Lee. Don't you lick me in the mouth. <laughs> She's our baby. She's 10 months old. And she is a mess. She's a chocolate dachshund. She's determined to lick me in the mouth. <laughs> anyway, um, she's the one you hear making all the noise in the videos. So, um, anyway, I'm trying to make good choices and good lifestyle changes that, that I can live with so that I can maintain a good BMI and a healthy weight and I can feel good. And anyway, and so I'm so glad that the treadmill come in. I can, um, <laughs> I can, I can get my workouts in even though it's dark and rainy and cold. And uh, walking is my most favorite form of exercise. I know it doesn't do a lot for my upper body. Sometimes I work my arms as I'm walking, but um, so that that's going to be a great tool that I'll have there to uh, to help me get my exercise in because I haven't been walking like I was after it started getting cold and wet outside and dark early and trying to work full time. But um, anyway, so speaking of the dark, dreary weather. There is, uh, it's hard, you know, with everything going on in the world around us, the COVID, um, politics and everything going on. It's hard not to feel discouraged or overwhelmed or worried about things, guys, and depressed even. And, you know, it's kind of a heavy feeling. So we have to do things to help us get out of this funk. And I know I've been in one for kind of a while, and I'm just... I struggle with it, and I'm fighting with it, and I'm trying to stay out of it. And so I'm speaking to myself as much, if not more, than anyone uh, when I give you guys information I'm giving you on here. So I was, you know, thinking about things, and we got to focus on the positive in things, guys. we got to look at the good in everything. Like, even if you have a flat tire, I know, nobody wants to have a flat tire. Let's scoot up here. But... You know, there is good things in a flat tire. What if you had it at home and stood out on the road? That's much safer. So we got to look at the good in it, you know. Or God could be saving us for some, from something down the road. Could have been an accident or something we might have been involved in. And that's how God uh, intercedes for us. That's how he protects us from things happening. So we always got to focus on the good in things. And yeah, I know nobody likes to have a flat tire, but try to find the good in everything, guys. If we focus on the negative, it's not going to get better. It makes it worse. But if we look at the good in life, things start getting better. And it's something that we have to practice. It doesn't just happen. You know, it takes years of practice of seeing the glass half full instead of half empty. Um, just... Look around and count your blessings, guys. Um, you know, gratitude is the first step to a good attitude. Gratitude, looking around and looking at our blessings, looking at what we have instead of what we don't have, that makes us happy. Um, that's the start of it right there. You know, we got to get ourselves uh, to where we see the good in life and the good in things. And I've written, I've written down a few things here. Um, that would, some ideas that I had that could help improve our moods along the way. First of all, though, I want to say that we got to focus on our Heavenly Father. Um, he protects us, He provides for us, and He's there for us. And we, if we put our trust in Him and our faith in Him, that's the first step to being in a better mood. And, um, and I wrote down some things here, and I'm talking to myself. Like I said, if not more than, to myself than anyone, you know, I've got to practice this stuff too, guys. I've been letting things get to me. I, 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 come here, Bobo. This is Beauregard. He's our, oh, he's heavy. He's our poo baby. He's four-year-old poodle. 
and all right no licky in the face there we go so those are my fur babies that you're always hearing in the background uh, uh, uh. oh they get jealous stop you're gonna have to get him <laughs> before we have a big fight right here <laughs> anyways um where was i okay so i've written down some ideas of things we can do to help put us in a better mood um, and it may mean that we need to get off social media and turn the news off, guys, and get things quiet and just meditate for a little while, read God's Word, draw closer to Him, because if we draw nigh to God, He will draw nigh to us, guys. And that may be what we got to do. Turn things down and get quiet and just listen to the voice of God. But I've written down some other things we can do, too. We can have a down day. You know, even God took a down day. And I don't think he had to have it. He's God, you know. He can do anything. But he knew what we needed, so he was showing us what we needed. And we all need a down day, guys. Just a do-nothing day to read or watch your favorite TV or just relax, you know. So take a down day. Get some rest. Because taking, having rest, getting good sleep, getting our fluids in, moving our body, uh, providing ourselves with uh, nutrient-dense um, nutrition and things our body needs. This is also uh, very important to how we feel and how we function and in our moods, okay? Because we're not feeling good. We're not going to be in the best of mood. So take a down day and get the rest you need. Take a walk, even if you got to get up and walk in the house. Get up and move around. Take a walk. But if you can get outside and get some fresh air, even if it's frigid, cold, bundle up. Look like an Eskimo. Who cares? Get outside. Get some fresh air in your lungs. It it, it um, refreshes your mind. It clears your thoughts. Um, move around. Get some fresh air and sunshine, especially if the sun's out and you can do it. Get out and get some sunshine. But if you can't get outside, get up and move around in the house as often as you can. Listen to your favorite music, whatever it is. Uh, my my personal favorite is Christian music because it's uplifting and it's clean and it's positive. Because um, I believe anything that we watch, we listen to, um, we read, or where we go, this is all what we're feeding our souls. So good things in, good things out, guys. So uh, anyway, whatever your favorite music is, listen to it because that always helps to put us in a good mood. Um, read a good book. The best book, of course, is the Bible, but after that, read, find you a good book of whatever topic or subject, whatever kind you like, find you a good book to read. And uh, that helps give you an escape from reality for a little while when you've got a good book to read and give your mind a rest from things going on around us. It's good for us. Journaling, I'm learning that journaling is... Uh, very helpful in um, getting those negative thoughts and feelings out. Write it down. Get it out and let it go. Um, smile at others as you meet them. Share your smile. You don't know what, we don't have any idea what other people are going through. So we need to be praying for others. That's another one. Pray for others, guys. We don't know what other people are going through. We only see the exterior. We only see what they allow us to see. We all have things we're going through. So be praying for others. And that'll make you feel better too. And smile, like I said, share your smile with others. Um, do random acts of kindness. Do some volunteer work. These are all things that'll make you feel better, guys. Take a long soak in the tub or a long hot shower, whichever you prefer. Do things to, for self-care. That'll help you to feel better and improve your mood. You have to do. You have to take care of yourself before you can take care of anybody else. If we let the stress and the things of the world eat and gnaw on us, and we stay tense and tight and stressed out all the time, that's not good for our health. It's not good for our relationships, guys. So we need to take time for self-care. Light your favorite candle. I've got to where I do that every night when we get home from work and when we're home and we're here with it. Don't ever leave a candle when you're not there to supervise it. Um, but just the smell of it, the warm glow, it just, it's a peaceful feeling, guys. Do things that you like that, that 
bring you peace and joy. Just the little things. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Um, go for a drive. If it's a sunny day or even if it's not, but especially if it's a sunny day, get out and go for a drive. That sun shines coming through the window. It just does something for your mood. It's just relaxing. It's good for you. Call a friend or a family member. You know, that's another good way. You know, you talk about things, you reminisce, and you have a good time on the phone visiting with friends and family. Get outside more. Every chance you can, if it's get out and walk to the mailbox, get out and walk to the end of the driveway, whatever it is, just get outside as much as you can. That fresh air, it just does wonders for us. It helps clear our thoughts and everything. Get into nature more. I know when Ron and I go up on the mountain, we did very often when the weather was nice but um and i can't wait till it warms up again where we can but that fresh air the the sights the sounds the the smell in the woods the it, it just wow it is such a peaceful calming feeling so get it get out into nature when you can do something like plan a, a getaway or a vacation Get your mind off of things that are negative and start focusing on some positive things. That does that always puts you in a better mood. Work on a hobby, whether it's building a puzzle or working a crossword puzzle. Or, yeah, putting a puzzle together or working a, a crossword puzzle. Whatever it is that you enjoy doing or um, some kind of craft or uh, whatever your hobby is. Do a little bit more of it, the things you enjoy, because that helps us to relax and puts us in a good mood and puts us at ease. Compliment somebody. If you see someone and there's something you see that's good in them or that you like, you may compliment them. You may be making somebody's day. We don't do that much anymore, and we need to. We need to be thoughtful and compliment others. And I notice the more I practice that, the better I feel even. So, there are so many small things that we can do to make us feel better. But focusing on the negative things going on around us and what we don't have or can't do will only darken our mood. So, let's all practice uh, living life on the brighter side, guys. Focus on the positives. Look for the good in everything. Let's count our blessings. And as the channel says, lighten up, buttercup. Until the next one, God bless. We'll see you.